doesn't like incentives, especially cash incentives? You might remember the Family Rewards Program that was instituted under the Bloomberg administration. The three-year pilot project paid parents of underprivileged, in underprivileged communities for things like going to the dentist, keeping a full-time job, and their children were given cash for attending school regularly. The program worked wonders in impoverished sections of Mexico and Brazil, and now there's another U.S. city that's trying it out. The program is gaining ground in Memphis, Tennessee, where Politico in a magazine piece reports that about one out of every three families there lives below the poverty line and thousands more teeter just above it. The inner city poverty rate at, in Memphis rested 36 percent. The unemployment rate is at 19 percent. And now city officials there are hoping to change the city's economic climate through the Memphis Family Rewards Program. Under that program, students can earn $40 every month for good school attendance. Students also get cash incentives for obtaining better grades. An A gets you $30. Students get $20 for a B, $10 for a C. Students are also financially rewarded for taking college entrance exams like the ACT. That, for example, would give a student $50 in their pocket. And going to a doctor or a dentist for a yearly checkup earns them $100. Parents cashing in on this too, they get $150 a month for keeping a full-time job. And I, I want to welcome somebody who knows a lot more about this and these kinds of programs than anybody else on the panel does, Marie Edwards. Marie is the program director for Bronx Works, which is a participant mm -hmm. of the Family Rewards Program and the Conditional Cash Transfer Program. Marie, welcome to the show. Thanks very much. Thank you, Andrew. And, and describe how that program works in the Bronx and if it's similar to what we just described uh, with the program that's underway in Memphis. Well, it, it, well, the one in Memphis is our sister agencies, Memphis Hope and Porter Leith. And here in the Bronx, uh, Bronx, New York, there is Bronx Works, mm -hmm. which is the agency in which I work for, as well as the Children's Aid Society. Now, the Children's Aid Society is also a neighboring partner organization as Bronx Works, but they're also our managing agency of the program overall. So they coordinate uh, the program with the Mayor's Office for Advancement, as well as the Center for Economic Opportunity. And the day-to-day -day operation of it, similar to that description, where there are incentives for certain behaviors and, and for doing well in school and attending school? Absolutely. Uh, in reference to the program, basically it's a, cash, a conditional cash transfer program in which the families are rewarded for doing daily activities, as many of us would do. Um, the families that we've targeted for this program overall are the families that are in receipt of temporary assistance to needy family benefits, as well as um, the supplemental nutrition assistance program benefits as well. Uh, these families were uh, randomly selected through a process in coordination with uh, the New York City's Human Resource Administration as well as the Department of Education. So the families targeted here are in the South Bronx community. It's one of the poorest neighborhoods or counties overall nationally as well as in Memphis, Tennessee. And the families are earning rewards in the areas of work, health, and education. And how has it been working in terms of kids in school and, and also uh, some of the other incentivized aspects of the program? Is, are you seeing benefits to it? We're seeing the benefits. Uh, in regards to Bronx Works, we, we wanted to establish a relationship with the families. Um, I don't know if you're aware or the panel is aware is that the Family Rewards is a second implementation. The first implementation was Opportunities NYC, uh, which we were targeting junior high school children and there are a multitude of different incentives that they had to uh, earn. And with the second model, it's more streamlined and there are three basic areas as we mentioned just a few seconds ago in terms mm -hmm. of work health and education and we felt it was more uh, something tangible that they could actually accomplish and the rewards in themselves are earned at a more higher frequency as it was opposed to in opportunities NYC mm. so the families from my experience and meeting many of the families Bronx works alone has 316 of the families uh, on our caseload and the families are hardworking families. These are families where they basically need a boost. A lot of the children have earned rewards, substantial amounts of rewards in the area of education. At this point, our children, in co in combined with uh, the Children's Aid Society, have earned relatively 1.6 million in education alone, 50% of which have gone to the bank accounts of these families. Uh, in regards to health, our families have earned around $781,000 at this point. And as far as work, our families have earned 
relatively in the range of five hundred to six hundred thousand dollars. And we and we want to talk more about the efficacy of these kinds of programs, but we, we also spoke with somebody who's a little bit critical of these kinds of programs. Uh, NYU political science professor Lawrence Mead, who I spoke with earlier today, he says he's opposed to the program and similar programs because they don't work. Here's my interview. Professor, the idea of incentivizing students and their families, in, in this case, the idea of offering cash for things like good grades and attendance, you've, you've got some reservations about that as a policy, correct? Uh, my reservation is primarily that we haven't uh, shown that it has much effect. The studies we've done up to now do not find that these incentives actually change very much. How widespread are those uh, examples that, you, that you've indicated? How widely has this been tested? The, t the two studies I know, one was in Ohio in the 90s. It was called the LEAP program, where families on welfare uh, had their uh, benefits reduced if they failed to keep their children in school. And that program showed very little effect. Uh, if, if one added additional staff people to follow up on the families, then you got a little more effect, but certainly not as much as was hoped. Uh, and the other example is Opportunity NYC, uh, a, a pro project that's been run in New York City where lower income families are paid extra money if they did things like going to work or keeping their children in school. And again, effects were quite limited. Uh, they found that students who were doing well in school were somewhat more likely to attend, but the students we cared most about, which are those who were doing poorly, uh, there was no effect. Uh, and there was no effect on employment. Neither study showed much effect, uh, and that contradicted the premise, which is that the families involved were going to respond to the incentives. It turned out that that wasn't really true. Uh, I think much of the explanation is that in these places, uh, the reasons why people are not attending school doesn't have a whole lot to do with the money they're getting from the government. It has more to do with whether the families are organized to keep the children in school. And paying a financial incentive doesn't appear to affect that very much. Is there any chance that, that the incentives simply weren't strong enough, whether in a positive or, or a negative sense, that if you incentivized a family more to be more organized, you might get a better result? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, there are other incentive experiments that have been run, particularly about employment. Uh, there's an effort, uh, many efforts have been made to make work pay more so that people have more reason to go to work. Uh, that doesn't have much effect either. Uh, I think uh, the, more, the most reasonable explanation is that these are families that are really not accustomed to respond to economic payoffs. And although we may want to make sure that working or staying at school is advantageous in some sense for them, they're not going to, to do it more because we pay them extra money. I mean, there's no reason to think that that's the case. Much more important is for them getting a clear-cut message from the authorities that they ought to do this. It's really direction by administrators that has a much larger effect than paying uh, extra money. Well, expand on that, on that direction from administrators, if you would, Professor. What kind of, of direction are they getting from administrators that does seem to be effective? Because yeah. obviously everybody has a vested interest in trying to see uh, people, especially in poorer communities, staying in school and expanding their educational horizons. Well, uh, I don't know a whole lot about these education studies per se. I just know that they weren't successful. Uh, what I would expect has more effect is simply uh, a good uh, truancy operation. The schools have truant officers who go out and track down children who have not appeared in school and try to get them to attend. Uh, that's likely to have more effect, I would think, than economic incentives. For, again, for this population, I'm not saying that no one responds to incentives, but typically it's the higher income population that responds more strongly. So for those who are worse off, we have to count on administrators reaching out to the families and getting them to keep their kids in school. That almost seems contradictory logically that, that families that have more would respond more to financial incentives, whereas you would expect families that don't have financial resources would be more inclined to, to, to go for those. It, was there any surprise when you saw the results of those studies? Uh, no, I wasn't because um, my own, my own uh, research has showed that this is very definitely the case in connection with employment. With employment, what counts is whether we expect people to work and whether they get a clear message that they're expected to work. Uh, and that message is more important than the economics of the situation. And now, you say it's, it's ironic that middle class people have more money, respond greater to incentives. I think it's the way, better way to put that is the, the main reason they're middle class is that they're more attentive to incentives and they live in a way that favors getting ahead in terms of making more money and avoiding expense and so on. Lower income people are less attuned to that. 
uh, they usually are not very focused on economic payoffs. Maybe they should be, maybe they shouldn't, but if you don't focus on that, you're more likely to be lower income, and that's in fact where they are. Larry Mead, Professor of Politics at NYU. Thanks for a few minutes and thanks for the insight, Professor. Okay, thank you. Marie, he's basically, the professor basically saying that the stick is more effective than the carrot. Your program fo focuses more on the carrot, obviously, than the stick. What's your reaction to, to his comments? Uh, my reaction basically is that um, he may need to do a little bit more homework uh, concerning uh, how effective the program has been. Um, I mean, we could sit here and talk about the ifs and the why nots and, you know, the possibilities. The whole idea behind a conditional cash transfer program is relatively to come up with something that will work, something that will move families that need our help to move them out of poverty. And the whole idea is really what can you come up with? As opposed to there being negative uh, feedback, find a way in which is innovative that would help move these families out of poverty. You say you don't want them on the welfare rolls. Many of our families are only receiving, for Bronx Works anyway, are receiving food stamps. The majority of our families are hard working families. They have very low paying jobs, but they're working hard and they have their pride there. We're gonna continue this conversation in just a second. We want to invite everybody at home to sound off on this. Head to Facebook, head to Twitter, sound off on today's question. Should at-risk students be paid to go to school and given other incentives as well? And up next, Marie and the rest of the panel weigh in on Professor's Mead take, as well as these kinds of incentive programs. That's after a quick break.